Hi all, Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Electronics here. Today we are taking a look back about five years when I bought this house. I wanted to monitor the uh, temperature and humidity of the basement where I was going to place my lab. And in order to do that, I quickly round up a small Wi-Fi yeah, wireless conductor through a Arduino Uno, a DHT22 and a ESP Wi-Fi shield and a small 3.3 volt inverter. Now, this I have had running for also five years now, so let's just take a quick look at what's going on in the basement right now. Which is installed in the yeah, very low basement here. And here I have a just designated radon measurement. And in here we can see my own setup with the DHT22 sticking out there, a Arduino Uno in a box and connects up to my Wi-Fi. And as you can see that a setup like that, I did never finish and I never got it integrated into something real where I could automate or use the integrations. And that is why today's sponsor of this video is AirThings, who sent me this little package. So uh, let's get this unboxed as well. Take a look at the solution I did work on and used for five years and why I think there are better alternatives, although at a higher cost. But uh, yeah, let's compare the two solutions. Let us get it unboxed. Or some nice bubble wrap here. The AirThings View Plus, which has a very nice uh, feel to it. Uh, clearly uh, focus on using Packaging that is easy to recycle and uh, also minimal. It can do radon, PM2.5, CO2, humidity, temperature, VOCs and pressure. Very nice package into a small uh, controller that can also connect directly and be the hub uh, for more sensors. Ooh. Lovely packaging with the, uh, I guess it's a Norwegian scenery as uh, air things do origin from Norway. So here we have the uh, unit, a connector for USB-C, regulatory information. Your air is good. Okay, so how to set up? We have to download the app for that, pull the battery tab, follow the in-app and on play display instructions. Seems fairly simple. And here we have it, it's the AirThings app. Uh, there's also another app called AirThings Wave, but this specifically says it's for the View Plus model of uh, AirThings sensors. Um, another thing we can note up here that to use as a hub, we have to connect the USB-C cable and it will have to be on a continuous power supply in order to function as a wireless hub to other sensors. But just as standalone, it will work fine on its own batteries. Now I have an account, so uh, I'll assume I'll just um, pull the battery tab here. Let's see what happens. Press add device. Okay. A small fan sound from the sensor. Location services off, grant permission. Uh, a bit of a funny thing, when I signed up for account, I had to choose a country and it says that you can never change this country code, so I'm forever bound to be in Denmark. Uh, but let's just say it's this one. I'll assume that uh, there is no other view plus here. So we'll just add that to our home. Let's see what happens. Welcome to the View Plus. Thank you. Yeah, okay, I'll... It, it needs a seven day calibration period for VOC and CO2 measurements to be um, in. And for radon, it really fluctuates in very high volumes. That it's like you get a gas a bubble that gets, in, gets into your house and then it slowly diminishes and you get another gas bubble and that's some kind of irregular cycle. Um, but 30 days is pretty normal. And yeah, just continue, uh, continue, done. Enter a six digit access code showed on the device screen to establish a secure connection to the device. Mm -hmm. 
So now we need to enter this code and that is probably in order to set it up with the um, Wi-Fi connection to make sure that we're actually communicating with this. And um, of course I will uh, will show you all the codes to my Wi-Fi and to the unit here. Connect to the Wi-Fi there and it's configured. So now all that needs to happen is wait. But we can also set up what we want to show here in the display as I remember. It's device settings, view plus. Display. That I might uh, like to see the um, outdoor temperature instead. Okay, I have to unselect them. So I want to see the outdoor temperature and I want to see the CO2 level. And this uh, e, e ink display updates nicely. And of course, the CO2 won't show any real good data before we have uh, our seven day calibration period through. So that was the introduction to the AirThings View Plus. So back in 2018, when I needed this code for a Arduino ADH22 and a ESP8266 Wi-Fi module, I googled that and I found Mikalis Vasilakis' website here, which is automotive.com, which is a English slash Greek website about Arduino and Raspberry Pi projects. So he um, yeah, made some code and he also uh, made his project public here, which we can see what we will need. We have the circuit schematic. We need a ThinkSpeak account for which we use to store the data in, uh, on our website. And here you can also find the entire code and how it's used as a data logger. Now, I ran into some issues um, with the schematic that where he uses the 3.3 uh, volt from the Arduino shield, I experienced that it would uh, simply pull down the power supply too hard when uh, connecting to the Wi-Fi module that it would knock the Arduino off and reboot it. So I had to build a standalone 3.3 volt regulator to power the Wi-Fi module. When I was designing this circuit, I was working offshore and at that point in time, I only had a L200 voltage regulator available. So if we scroll down in this application node, 255 from ST Microelectronics, we have a programmable voltage regulator setup. And that is almost identical to the setup that I have made. That we have this in figure six. And it is programmed along for 3.3 volt with the settings for 5 volt but with the 10 kilo ohm potentiometer sitting here it is easy to adjust the output voltage to fit 3.3 volt let's have a closer look of the enclosure that i made here it is just a standard plastic enclosure we have the usb port and power on the arduino sitting here at the side and we have the dh22 sticking out here just with a piece of plastic to make a distance so we don't have any heat from the enclosure um, disturbing the sensor. And as I mentioned, I had to make this little 3.3 volt um, regulator. And I can actually see here that I use it to power both the ESP Wi-Fi module and the DH22. So um, I might have had bigger issues with the power than I initially remembered. but Nonetheless, this works and uh, has no problems with running everything on this uh, regulator. It's quite big and can supply probably one amp. Now, uh, one of the other issues with this um, setup is that the Wi-Fi module uses pin 1 on the Arduino. And as I recalled, in order to program it, you actually have to disconnect the Wi-Fi module because it disturbs something with the, um, was it the I2C bus or something like that. There is something with uh, programming and Wi-Fi module being connected at the same time that doesn't work together. So if you have problems programming this, disconnect your Wi-Fi module while programming the Arduino. And here we have the public view of my ThinkSpeak account. Here we have the temperature and humidity readouts from the sensor. And one of the downfalls to a do-it-yourself project like this is that 
this Arduino code doesn't actually reconnect to my Wi-Fi once it loses connection. I will have to recycle, power cycle it and reboot it in order for it to reconnect to the Wi-Fi. That could probably be fixed in the code, but it's something I have just lived with as my Wi-Fi is running pretty stable. But actually pointing out great here is that on February 6th I lost connection and I haven't received any data since and I haven't noticed. So in fact I have lost two months of data because I have been busy rebuilding my basement laboratory. And we can also see that here in the private view that I actually did change the um, setup to sit inside the basement laboratory and I moved it into our uh, basement crypt which is this um, low ceiling basement we have under the floorings in half the house and we can see that did drop the temperatures pretty ra rapidly over the uh, course of the winter so that is what it's measuring right now and what I have been using this for is not with the API, but I used uh, just a data export into a Excel sheet or into LibreOffice Calc here. And here I have, have my orange temperature calculations or temperature measurements and the dark blue, which is the humidity of the basement. And for each top and bottom here, that is summer and winter. And we can see that go on for yeah, 2018 then we have 19, 20, 21, and then summer of 22, where I stopped these measurements for the laboratory while rebuilding it. Now I also added a lot more information over here, like um, weather data from uh, the Danish weather services. And uh, the red one is also the radon level from a the radon um, sensor that I showed earlier in the video. So it's a lot of tedious data work back and forth with these do-it-yourself solutions when I don't get to make the right integrations from the start. And that is really one of the biggest downfalls to a project like this, that you get to live with these small, simple solutions because moving a lot of uh, exported data doesn't take much time, but working on an integration might take a lot of hours to get working properly. As I have already been saving my data in the cloud at ThingSpeak, uh, there shouldn't be much debate about storing the data at AirThings uh, cloud solution instead of ThingSpeak, that's about the same. So if we log into the AirThings website, that is much better than what we can find on the app. The app doesn't really have the ability to make dashboards and that's probably one of my biggest issues with the um, View Plus app that it simply doesn't have uh, this um, dashboard functionality that you have to click in through the center and then you find the single measurement and you can see a graph of that. That's not really what I want to see. Dashboard.airthings.com And here I have my view plus and as we can see we set it up yesterday and I set up a tile view here where we have all the sensors of it. We have the radon, we have the temperature, humidity, CO2 levels, the VOC and the two particle measurements. And for now, uh, some of these measurements are of course uh, way off as they need 30 days for the radon and seven days for the uh, CO2 and VOCs to calibrate. But uh, yeah, all data is available. And what I really want to look into is, of course, the integrations where we have um, yeah, AP, API uh, interface. And it has also some uh, guides to being integrated directly into Home Assistant, which is a open source or automation system where you can actually use your data to automate things like controlling a fan or open windows or, yeah what other kind of uh, automation you want to make because AirThings is only a sensor. It can't make anything do anything. Now, if you want to make it really simple, you can on your phone use uh, IFTTT, which is a if then then, if this, then that. Uh, and it's a simple integration where you can integrate apps between each other, which can access your AirThings app and get data from that. And then you can automate with simple if clauses or if statements uh, to make some automations on the app level. That's another possibility. 
And here I am, five years into a project and doing the final evaluation, the final conclusion that what did I really think about building my own Arduino-based DH22 yeah, IoT sensor? Well, it cost me absolutely nothing. This is uh, components for around maybe $20. So it's a very cheap project, just takes a lot of hours and it's a missing all integrations. You're building everything from scratch. You're really doing everything yourself. And that is also the charm of do it yourself. You learn the technology, you learn to piece it together, you get something to work. Now, would I still recommend doing this? For sure, to learn about how things work. This is an absolute winner project. It's uh, easy to make and you get some really good measurement uh, data up into the cloud, which you can do something with. Really uh, a nice thing. When we get to something like the AirThing sensor like this or any other product which um, sells IoT sensors that uploads data into the cloud, this is maybe around some two to three hundred dollars. Uh, it's a much more expensive hardware. Uh, but you get all the integrations, you get the API, you get security, you get dashboards, you get everything. Um, so while this is much more expensive, this took me like 10 minutes to unpack, install, set up and get data. Whereas the other one here, that cost me quite a lot of headaches, um, especially with programming um, while having the ESP module plugged in and like rebooting from power loss and failure and not reconnecting data losses. This just uh, pays, you pay for something else in, in these products for sure. So um, at the end of the day, I think I'm going to go with the commercial sensors simply because losing data due to your own shortcomings in a project, that is kind of irritating. Well, that simply doesn't happen with uh, something like this because that's thought into the product that if you lose connection, it stores data locally, uploads it later, and all those kind of small features. So thank you for watching. I hope you will build your own do-it-yourself -do sensors and learn how this works. But if you really need something that you want to build into your home automation, I really do recommend getting commercial sensors. Simply because if you want to control your house and make sure your house has a good environment, it's good to rely on good and stable data instead of, yeah, do-it-yourself solutions that can be prone to lose connection if you don't make it right. And that's what I can see after five years. I simply have not put the time and effort into doing it right. And that is one of the biggest traps in do-it-yourself that when, once you get things to work, that kind of stops all development and improving. So until next time, see ya.